In this video, I'd like to talk about graphing quadratics when they're in their factored form. So if you're able to have a quadratic function and you can factor it, then graphing it is fairly straightforward. This is one of the easier ways to graph quadratics. Now, if it's in vertex form, that might be possibly even a little bit easier, but if it's in standard form, that's usually the hardest to actually graph. But in factored form, the general strategy that we're going to use, and let me just make some room so that I can actually write this down. But the strategy is to first find the zeros of the function. So what I mean by that is figure out when does the function equal zero. And so we're trying to find the x values that would give the function, or when we plug into the function, that would make it equal to zero. Since a zero is just when the y value or the function value is zero. So it's going to be points maybe somewhere along this line somewhere. And so that's our first step. So let me just write this down. We're going to look at the strategy here. And once we find the zeros, our next step, we're going to use symmetry to find the vertex of the function, or at least the x value of the vertex. So the vertex is always going to be right in the middle of both zeros. So let me write that down. We're going to use symmetry to find the x value of the vertex. And once we found the x value of the vertex, all we need to do is plug it into the function, and that will give us the y value of the, of the vertex. And at that point, we have the vertex in two zeros, and we can just complete our curve. And if you want to get more specific and more exact, you can also find the y-intercept, just for a little bit more accuracy. Though if you work through these problems on the Khan Academy exercises, you'll see that their interactive grapher really only needs those three points to complete the curve. And then it'll just fill it in perfectly through whatever the y-intercept is. So let me write down step three. We're going to plug in the x value of the vertex to find the y value of the vertex. So again, once you plug in this x value to the function, it's just going to give you the y value of that vertex, and then you can plot that coordinate point. So with the strategy in mind, let's start applying it to this function. So let me just make a little bit more room. I'm going to remove this, so you might want to write that down. So we're going to find the zeros first. So we'll take our function, f of x, we'll set it equal to 0. And so our function is this 5 over 9 times x plus 9 times x plus 3 and actually find these zeros. So which x values make this equation zero? To actually find those, we're going to use our zero product property. So if this expression is equal to zero, then zero times whatever this is, is also equal to zero. Likewise, if this second expression, the x plus three, if we put in negative three here, then we'll get zero here times by six times by this, but zero times anything is zero. So the two x values that are going to work for us is negative 3 in this one. And if we plug in negative 9 here, it will make this first expression in parentheses equal to 0. So negative 3 and negative 9 are two of the zeros of the function. So I'm going to plot those. So this point right here is negative 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's negative 9. And then we're going to use symmetry because the vertex is right in the middle of these points or at least the x value is right between these, since the x value of the vertex we refer to as the axis of symmetry. So what number is right in the middle of these two numbers? Well, we can just find their average. So you can add them both up and then just divide by 2. So you have minus 3 plus negative 9, or minus 9, divided by 2. So that's negative 12 over 2, which is minus 6. And it should make sense that minus 6 is right in the middle of these. There are three numbers to either side. So this is 4, 5, negative 6 right there. But we're not actually plotting that point because we don't, first of all, know where the y value of the vertex is. And second of all, we know it's not going to be one of the zeros. So I'm just going to draw in that axis of symmetry. 4x is negative 6. Let me just rewrite that a little bit neater. But at this point, we have to plug in negative 6 into our function to figure out what the y value is, or to figure out what the function value is. So let's plug that in. This is the third step of our strategy. So f of minus 6 
and we'll have 5 ninths times minus 6 plus 9 is 3. And minus 6 plus 3 would be negative 3. So this becomes a negative 9. So you have 5 over 9 times negative 9. So the 9's cancel. And so you just have 5 times negative 1, which is minus 5. So our vertex, what we just found here, all right, V for vertex, has an x value of minus 6 and a y value of minus 5. So let's graph that point. So this is the x value of minus 6. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So somewhere around there. And at this point, we can just connect the curve. And like I said, if you want, you can also find this y-intercept here. Though if you're using the interactive grapher, this is all you'd need. So you would be done at this point. But to find the y-intercept, that's just, remember, when x is 0. So you plug that into your function here. You get 9 times 3, which is 27, divided by 9, which is 3, and then 5 times 3, which is 15. So maybe somewhere up there.